Hi, my name is Professor Mers. I teach English at El Camino College and I teach English 1A, English 1AS, and English 1C. And this is a PowerPoint that I share with my students on how to write a great thesis statement. You can do it. There's just a few general guidelines you have to follow. Keep in mind that instructors from different classes will um, often require different things of thesis statements, but these are pretty general tried and true concepts that will help you write a great thesis statement. Okay, so first. It's important to know that scholarly writing is based in argument. So I'm gonna go ahead and read this. Most writing in college is argument-based. Your argument is usually your main idea, often stated in your thesis statement, which is backed up with evidence that supports your argument. In most college papers, you will need to make an argument and use evidence to support it. Your ability to do this will separate your papers from students who see essays as just summary, description, and lists of facts and details, otherwise known as an information dump. So you have to write arguments in college. And oftentimes the instructor won't even tell you they expect you to write an argument because they assume that you already know that. Contrary to popular belief, you do not want to start your essay as general as possible and then slowly narrow down your focus until you come to a conclusion by the end. Instead, you should start specific, stating your argument in the form of, the, form of a thesis during your intro and then spend the rest of the paper trying to prove your point. So what is a thesis statement? It's all of these things. It's the main idea of your essay. It's a statement that prepares your readers for what is to come. It has a claim or an argument in it. And a lot of those, a lot of instructors use those terms interchangeably, claim and argument. It's located at the end of the introduction and it should not be in the form of a question. So your thesis statement is a statement that should end with a period. Um, as you get into higher level writing courses, uh, you may be taught to break your thesis statement up throughout the essay, or to arrive at your thesis statement at the end in your conclusion. But for most standard general education writing courses, your instructor expects the thesis to come at the end of the introduction. So that's where you wanna put it. Okay, the basic thesis statement has two parts and that's it. It's got your topic and then your claim or your argument about that topic, that's it. So here's a simple thesis statement. Friday, which is our topic, in our opinion, our claim or our argument is that it's the best day of the week. So Friday is the best day of the week would be a thesis statement. I would love to read that essay. Okay, but what makes an excellent thesis statement? How do you get an A in your, in your essays? Well, you wanna make sure your thesis is relevant, specific, debatable, and smoothly integrated. So we're gonna go through those four qualities now. Okay, so your excellent thesis statement must be relevant. It has to follow the assignment sheet. And that's, I think, so important. If the instructor, if the instructor asks you to write about Christina Aguilera, but you write about Britney Spears, you could be an excellent writer and, and write a very compelling, interesting essay about Britney. But if your instructor wanted Christina Aguilera, you've got to make sure you write about Christina Aguilera. So you have to make sure you're going back and reading the assignment sheet carefully and writing a thesis that is relevant to the assignment sheet. And your thesis must address current issues accurately. So I'll get to that in a second. Um, so what I have here is an actual prompt from an essay I assigned to students in English 1C. And this is the prompt on my assignment sheet. It says this. You will analyze three modes of persuasion in Charles Murray's Are Too Many People Going to College? You will answer the question, how effectively or ineffectively does Murray utilize Aristotle's three modes of persuasion? You must focus on ethos, pathos, and logos. So what I've done is I've highlighted the really important terms and concepts that the student has to write about in their essay. So in order to write a really excellent thesis statement, the student should include this language from the prompt inside their thesis statement to show the instructor, look, I'm following the assignment sheet. So that's a little tip you can do to write that excellent thesis is use key terms and ideas 
from the assignment sheet inside your thesis. And then we have this uh, a sample thesis right here that says smoking causes cancer. You need to make sure that your thesis is arguing a relevant idea that reflects current ideas accurately. And smoking has already been proven to cause cancer several decades ago. So writing, a, writing an essay that's trying to argue this wouldn't really be an excellent thesis because it's already been proven. So you wanna make sure that your ideas are relevant to current ideas as well. Okay, excellent thesis statements are specific. They should identify ideas clearly and accurately. So it's gotta be easy to understand and it creates an appropriate scope for the essay. So what I mean by that is when you're writing your thesis, your thesis is sort of functioning as a camera lens, right? And you can take your camera lens and zoom out and capture a really large view. Or you can take your camera lens and focus in on something very specific, much like we have with this Leaning Tower of Pisa. The first shot is more of a, a zoom out photo where we catch people in the foreground, there's a building in front of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. We see um, some background and the clouds in the sky and even some hills in the distance. That's a zoomed out picture. And the second picture, we've taken our camera lens and we really focus in on the actual tower. And we can even see people, they look like they're maybe even waiting in line there. And so we have a much more focused image. That's how you need to think of your thesis statements. And the really excellent thesis statements are specific. So we have two sample thesis statements here with different scopes, different sort of levels of zooming in. So the first says, the Civil War was the worst war in history. That's a very general thesis statement. It may be following the assignment sheet, let's assume that it is, but it's making a really general argument. This student, if they were to actually write this essay, would have to compare the Civil War to every single war in the history of the United States. And well, what they're actually saying is in history, so the entire world, that's not doable in a college level essay. If a student is gonna write that thesis, they're probably gonna take several books to support that argument. So I would encourage a student to make a more specific thesis statement. So this second thesis statement is more appropriate because it's more specific. It reads, the Battle of Bunker Hill was a defining victory for colonial forces. So instead of focusing on the entire Civil War, they take their camera lens they and they take their thesis and they really focus in on, on a particular battle within the Civil War. And then they make a really specific argument about it, that it was a defining victory. So that would be a much more appropriate thesis because the scope of a thesis is more specific. Okay, the next quality of effective thesis statements is that they're debatable. Someone should be able to disagree with you. So let's look at these three thesis statements and kind of address the debatability of each one. The first one says smoking is bad. Well, Several decades ago, like that previous thesis statement, um, scientists and cancer research confirmed that smoking is bad for health. So there's not very many people that could disagree with you and back up their argument with evidence because there really isn't much evidence to support that smoking is good for one's health. So the next thesis statement is more specific. And because it's more specific, it's typically more debatable. This one says, cigarette companies should not be able to advertise it to kids. So I could certainly imagine that there would be people that would disagree with this thesis statement. I bet that cigarette companies would disagree that they should be able to market to kids. Um, maybe some marketing companies, um, free speech, you know, they might argue that, you know, you can say what you want, you can market to kids. Um, however, when we think back to this idea that thesis statements need to be relevant, in the state of California, they prohibited cigarette companies from marketing to kids. So this thesis statement, although it's more debatable, isn't quite reflecting the most recent laws with cigarette marketing um, regulations. So this third thesis statement is more debatable because it is more relevant and in, in reflecting current issues with marketing um, 
to kids. So this one reads, even though cigarette companies have been banned from selling flavored cigarettes for kids, the company should not be allowed to flavor any tobacco products such as e-cigarettes and hookah tobacco. So there are no laws or regulations for um, flavoring other tobacco products. <clears throat> So this would be a more debatable thesis statement because it is more reflective of current um, cigarette marketing regulations. So you'll see that specificity, relevance, and debatability are very much tied together. So it's hard to um, only do only you know if a the if you have a really excellent thesis statement, it is going to reflect all three of those qualities. Okay, next slide. And this is our fourth quality of excellent thesis statements and our last quality. Excellent thesis statements are smoothly integrated at the end of the introduction. So I have a couple sample thesis statements here. I'm gonna go ahead and read them out loud. They're taken out of context. So these would all go at the last sentence of an introduction. So I'll just read them real quick and then I'll talk a little bit more about what that means to integrate them smoothly. Guns should not be banned. And what I've done is underline each of the topics and then the claim or the argument about that topic comes after. So guns should not be banned. World War II was the beginning of the downfall of international relationships between Russia and its allies. Student fears prevent students from achieving academic success. Vaccines should be mandatory for all school aged children regardless of religious beliefs. Americans must decrease their garbage output if we are to reduce global warmings. The Democrats should adopt a more moderate approach to fiscal spending. So you can see we have all different types of thesis statements. You can agree or disagree with them if you want. Um, but what I'm trying to show is that these thesis statements all follow that topic and then argument after. So when we're reading introductions, you want to make sure when we're writing introductions, you want to make sure that your thesis is integrated into your introduction, that it connects to the sentence that comes before it and to the ideas that come before it inside the introduction. Oftentimes, students spend a lot of time crafting the perfect thesis statement, and then they put it in at the end of their introduction, but it does not smoothly flow with the ideas that come before it. So sometimes that amazing thesis statement can sound a little tacked on um, or unconnected to the rest of the introduction. So two things you can do to smoothly integrate your thesis into your paragraph is to use transitional language and use introductory clauses. So we're looking at that first sample thesis statement, which was guns should not be banned. So there are ways to tweak your thesis statement, like I said, to have it more smoothly connect to the ideas that come before it and the sentence that comes before it. So these are all different ways to write that same idea or all different thesis statements that capture the same argument. So the first one says, therefore, guns should not be banned due to certain civil liberty laws. So we have that transitional language, therefore. So that is kind of showing us that the sentence before or the sentences before inside the introduction were sort of addressing some larger reasons um, that have to do with civil liberty laws. So that transitional language can just quickly and easily connect the thesis to the ideas that come before it. The next one, however, legally purchased firearms should not be banned from law-abiding citizens. So this a transitional language shows a contradiction. However, so that means this paragraph is probably arguing that um, maybe um, those assault styles um, should be banned. And so they're saying, however, legally purchased firearms should not be banned. Um, so again, depending upon what you say in your introduction, you're going to want to choose a transitional language like therefore or however to more accurately reflect the relationship between the ideas in your thesis and your introduction. Okay, introductory clauses are another way to connect the ideas in your introduction to your thesis. So the third one reads, although critics of gun safety argue that guns should be banned, they should not. So this introduction was probably talking or summarizing some critics of gun safety and what they were arguing. So this smoothly connects those critics to what the student is actually gonna, or the argument that the student is actually going to write about. 
And then the last thesis statement reads, since the number of mass shootings have risen, assault style guns should be banned, but handguns should not. Um, so this introductory clause, again, is sort of summarizing some ideas that were previously stated in the introduction. And then um, with that comma, because you have to end your introductory clause with a comma, like they do here and here, um, it weaves in more smoothly, it flows in more smoothly into the student's thesis. Okay, do not write a listing thesis statement. This is not one of those four qualities, but this is something to keep in mind. A listing thesis statement limits the scope of your essay. It gives your reader an opportunity to disagree with you before they even read the essay, and it gives away the ending of your essay to your audience. So let's look at this sample listing thesis down below. The fall of communism in Eastern Europe occurred because of cultural forces, ineffective economic policies, and political strife within the party. Now, if you had to write a 10 page essay on this and you're trying to use a listing thesis statement with only those three ideas, your body paragraphs are gonna be several pages long each. So a listing thesis statement can really limit what you could write about in those longer essays. And not every essay you're assigned is going to be a five paragraph essay that's you know roughly three pages long. So you could actually hurt your ability to write a really strong essay when you write a listing thesis statement. Um, a revised version of this thesis statement could be something like this. While cultural forces contributed to the collapse of communism in Eastern Europe, the disintegration of economies played a central role in its downfall. So this thesis statement, instead of listing these three causes of the fall of communism, instead is addressing one central cause, the disintegration of economies. So that's gonna be the focus of the essay, this, the disintegration of economies, but the student could also discuss cultural forces and political strife as it's connected and related to the economies. So you just need to play around with your thesis a little bit to give it a single specific focus that allows you to kind of address that focus from different angles and arguments and relationships inside the body of your essay. Okay, and thesis statements are like movie trailers. And this connects back to the last bullet point here that it gives away the ending of your essay to your audience. So what I mean by that is, Movie trailers tell an audience about the genre, characters, and plot of the movie, but it does not give away the ending of the movie. Neither should your thesis list your reasons that you will use to support your thesis. Your thesis should not give away the best part of your essay. And the best part of your essay is your logic, your evidence, your reasons, the stuff in the body of your essay. Um, like the movie trailer, your thesis should create excitement about your, your essay, should make the reader want to read your essay to find out your logic and your reasons and your evidence. You don't want to give it all away in your thesis statement because then your reader has no motivation to continue reading the essay. They can just read your thesis statement and say, oh, okay, I know how this essay ends. I don't need to read it. I don't need to waste my time. So your thesis functions as a movie trailer. It should entice your readers to want to continue reading. So that's all I have for you guys for thesis statements. Um, if you do want help with your thesis statements, you can always go to the Writing Center where we have very amazing writing tutors who will hold conferences with you to work on your thesis statements. And that's all I have. And let's stop recording.